it's Celeste. Just looking for my pen. <laughs> How are you? Is it morning for you? All right, give me one sec. Something weird with the brush going on. Let us see if I accidentally changed the settings and there's no quick way to do that. Okay, brush. You have to pull it up on um, this screenshot. Okay, brush. All three of those, those are selected. Those three are selected. Huh. Sure, sensitivity is like way high. Hey, maybe I'm freaking crazy. Because I do this. Oops. That's 
the reason, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Still going. Now we can draw. <laughs> Back to normal. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a back pose. Um. Uh, I'm gonna pause the music for a minute if you guys don't mind. I need to make sure my um, you guys won't be able to see it. But I need to make sure my uh, I'm releasing my video uh, in like two minutes. I need to make sure that it has no issues. So I'm just gonna put it at the bottom. Tell me if this sounds familiar. If you catch the scent of a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies, maybe you passed by a bakery, your mom's got them cooking in the oven, or you whipped up a batch yourself. Either way, that scent of sugar, butter, and toasted chocolate hits you like a flavor fever dream. Your mouth starts watering as you imagine that first bite into the crispy golden... Oh, but you guys won't be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'll do that. Stereo, this is what it's like to experience a craving. Artists <laughs> okay. experience this every day with what gets them excited to draw. You see Let's do this. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty expansion. Hell yeah, I want to do some cyberpunk fan art. You see the new One Piece episode where they show Gear 5 Luffy fan art. You see Scott Pilgrim be animated for a new Netflix special and you want to make fan art and a comic of your own. Artists are ambitious as hell and anything cool excites you to create. Today we're going to explore the real reason why you're not better at art and it's got nothing to do with how much you apply yourself. It's how you never finish anything because you're always excited about the next thing you want to do. And then I'm going to help you fix this problem so you can finish your projects and your pieces and bring that work in progress folder down to zero. Let's get into it. In 2018, they unveiled the first gameplay footage of Cyberpunk 2077. You play in an open world action adventure RPG as V, a merc with a serious need to prove themselves. The video was 48 minutes long, but its hooks were into me the moment the elevator doors opened and a complete badass took down a couple of hey, four. After multiple delays, it would take a full two years All right. before uh, Cyberpunk hit the I was shelves. just saying I so my was paused the um the idea of diving into night city a few months uh, before the final you can go watch the video i'm trying to watch it now that's why it's like half my own launch event. I pre -ordered the game on the screen i want to make sure there's no problems I, i'm a dummy i like timed it so poorly i should have released it before this close to i did this stream <laughs> All the paperwork filled out and uh, approved. When I got wind of but yeah, if you don't mind going to watch it, I know you said that you have trouble with the and broken mess of a game. Uh, the trigger of like addiction. So just if you can't watch it for whatever reason, don't Cyberpunk was gonna be don't go any further than you you need to. Turned to craving and compulsion to the point where I was completely off the rails. I was lucky. I think it'll be okay, but I don't. I don't know what your triggers are. Terrible mistake. But I appreciate you watching the video. That'd be nice of you. Job saved up money. But just know, a new computer, I won't hold it against you if uh, you can't make it through over someone some reason. It was pretty Nova, but not the life-changing, mind-bending experience that I expected. But that's not what I want you to get out okay. of the story. What I want you to see is how destructive you can be to your own values and goals when your craving runs wild. I'm what you might call a perpetual sketcher. I've improved at sketching so much because I never move on to the next step. The final line work, the clean lines, the perfect rendering. My whip folder has been packed to the brim with unfinished sketches, paintings, even entire projects that is until recently. 
In order to learn more about anatomy, I made a project around the manga Bleach. I've always admired Kubo's artwork from his character designs to even the way he designs the chapter covers. And beyond that, I love the world of Bleach that he's created. There's so many rich characters. I feel compelled to draw the spiky hair of Ichigo or the cat-like eyes of Grimjaw Jaggerjack. I can bring them to life with my own stories through fan art and share them with you so we can enjoy these characters even more. My goal out of this project was to find a way to sincerely improve at anatomy, all while enjoying the project through the lens of Bleach, a series that I love. At first I was incredibly excited, like my enthusiasm to jump into Night City in Cyberpunk. I outlined an entire art book full of potential ideas for each page, rounding out to about 50 pages total. <laughs> I told you, artists are ambitious. When I was younger I used to get these cinnamon chip muffins from the grocery store every time we went, and I always wanted to get like four or five of them. My mom would always tell me your eyes are bigger than your stomach. It was her polite way of saying we're gonna get sick of these muffins before you even get to the third one. And she was right, moms tend to have that superpower. You're always gonna have the urge to want to do more because you're excited, or in the case with the muffins, eat more. The craving puts you over the edge into this destructive territory. I was never gonna get to 50 pages for my first ever project, but I was too excited to back down. I started strong enough, I've already done more personal pieces this year than I ever have. That's a significant accomplishment and I pat myself on the back for it. <laughs> but I realized as my excitement for this project started to wane, I revealed a big, big weakness that I didn't know I had. Your brain is a complex mechanism, and for some reason, it is always tripping you up. What was once a means of survival now has you downing a box of cookies in one sitting, or spending your life savings on a new computer. When I started this Bleach project, two very important things were happening inside my brain. One, I started to get curious about a new original project. That curiosity released dopamine. I got very excited. I dove headfirst into this project and outlined every page and idea that I had. Two, and unbeknownst to the excited part of me when I started this project, my brain started developing a tolerance toward it. See, your brain doesn't just get you excited about new ideas. It also builds tolerance to new stimulus so that you don't get overwhelmed. So you conserve energy instead of being a crazy, excitable, happy person all day. How kind of our brain to not turn us into the Joker. But there is a downside to not being the clown prince of crime, and it's not being beaten up by Batman. As you get into your project and your tolerance starts to build, your interest in that project starts to plummet. And when every new exciting thing is happening right around the corner, the next big game or TV show, your dopamine is releasing for all these new exciting things that are happening. Now you're stuck with a project or piece that you don't feel like doing because you're excited about this next new thing. Your body is essentially on this IV drip of chemicals that are getting you excited about something new instead of your true goal, which is to finish the project that you started. If you play them, you know how enticing a new video game can be. Hey, e-boy. Hey, hello. Hi, Peanut. Peanut Dross. You start building a nice butt, strong line. <laughs> Thank you. I know this is a really strong uh, butt pose. Currently playing that you were just excited about a second ago, and then you never end up finishing the game. I'm gonna fill up the screen with the drawing uh, in a minute. I'm I'm trying to uh, watch my video. You guys can't see it or hear it. But I'm trying to make sure my video has no issues. Real quick. This behavior I timed it I so poorly, I should have released it <clears> before anything, it's also I did the stream. Better. I never even gave myself the chance. And if you've made it this far in the video, I'm guessing you've done the same thing. Well, be sure to like and subscribe now, because it's time to show you your way out of this. To understand how we can put a stop to that perpetual wit machine, let's run it back to those chocolate chip cookies. When I started imagining craving a cookie as that sugary smell hits you from the heat of the oven, it made me think of habits. After all, a craving for something like a cookie 
over time could become a habit. You become accustomed to the trigger of smelling baked sugar and chocolate, a seemingly innocent behavior that turns into something more sinister. Replace those chocolate chip cookies with something more unsavory, and you might find yourself describing addiction. Enter Gabor Mate, a renowned addiction expert that focuses on healing with compassion and mindfulness. I very much doubt that artists have an addiction to creating whips, but like I said with the cookies, a simple urge repeated over time can become a habit. In some cases, those habits can be destructive. A constant need to jump from one project to the other is the artist's version of a destructive habit, one that I believe we would all be grateful to course correct. And so I explored Dr. Gabor Mate's book on addiction called In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts to extrapolate a use case for you so you can get back on the path of your goals and I can get back on the path of mine. With a little kindness towards yourself and awareness, you can change not only the strength of your impulsive habits, but the way in which they start, the urgings or cravings. He outlines a four-step self-treatment method developed at the UCLA School of Medicine for the treatment of OCD. Step one, relabel. Label the urge for exactly what it is, not what you assume it to be. For example, you may feel like you need to move on to the next piece instead of staying with the one that you have, or you need to move on to the next new game before you finish the one that you have. But there is no urgency. That feeling of urgency is manufactured. You're trying to bring awareness to the urge you're having rather than trying to suppress it or give into it. That will only give it strength. Step two, reattribute. Place the blame on your brain. Wilder Pennold, a Canadian neurosurgeon, said, Although the content of consciousness depends in large measure on neuronal activity, awareness itself does not. To me, it seems more and more reasonable to suggest that the mind may be a distinct and divergent essence from the brain. In essence, your brain is not you, and it's sending you a false message. It's something that was programmed into you when you were younger. Rather than blaming yourself for that, you are kindly and calmly assessing why you're feeling what you're feeling. Why why does this feeling have such a deep hold over you? The urge to change pieces or go to your new game is not a flaw or a weakness. It was circumstances beyond your control, but you can take responsibility now. If you change how you respond to the urge to dive into another work in progress, you'll eventually weaken that urge. You'll no longer be controlled on autopilot. You'll be making decisions for yourself in the driver's seat. Step three, refocus. Buy yourself time to let the craving subside. Remember how we said that the brain builds tolerance for new stimulus. It applies to cravings too. The cravings will pass. So many games and shows come out every year and they feel irresistible because you're constantly bombarded by ads. Your dopamine is just firing off left and right for all these new experiences. Every new ad is a new craving, but you can hold out. I'm sure there are plenty of things that you've been excited for that you've let pass. A new game that you didn't decide to buy because you didn't have the money, or a new show that you didn't watch on release day because you didn't have the time. That craving subsides eventually, until you can control when you actually want to buy into it, when you want to experience those things, when you want to move on to a new piece. You might give in sometimes, but no matter how long you hold out, that's an achievement. Even if you fail, you can improve a little bit each time. Step four, revalue. This is a time to reflect, to remember the impact of your urge. I had to remind myself the reason why I went to all the trouble to make this fan art project. Write it out if you need to. Moving on to the next exciting thing means another work in progress, another unfinished project, and more unrealized potential. You're here to finish your projects, to finish your pieces, and improve your art. Step five, recreate. This is Gabor Mate's personal final step, to choose a different life. Choose the things you value with conscious awareness. Ask yourself, what were the real needs you had that this craving was supposedly supposed to satisfy? Every time I got a new idea that I wanted to pursue and I wanted to move off of the bleach project, I could remind myself that there's no rush. This project will help me improve and so will the next one, but I won't get anywhere if I leave everything half-baked. I have to put 100% into each one until it's done and you can too. 
I'm happy to say I'm continuing my bleach project, and now I have all the tools to bring it to a spectacular finish, I hope. <laughs> I hope this episode can do the same for you when you're tempted to drop another file into the work in progress folder. Together we can finish a whole bunch of art and improve one step at a time. Let me know in the comments if you have any trouble with impulse control and things like urges, whether it be working on projects or being mean to yourself when you draw a terrible sketch. We can give each other support. That's what our community is there for. That's all for today's episode. Thank you very much to Wacom for sponsoring this video. They've been incredibly supportive about this healthy creative process that we've been building here to support everyone for a lifelong career in the arts. And with that, have a happy and healthy creative process. Did okay. And now I can uh, <laughs> make this bigger, put this on, and turn the music back on. <laughs> I was surprised at myself for, for making this pose work. I don't know all the anatomy here, which is a little bit of a struggle. Um, the back anatomy is definitely a lot more difficult. But I think I did a pretty dang good job. I have to say. I need a more straight on pose. Hey, Suad. How's it going? hands jesus uh okay so we need something more straight on so i good that's that's good to hear um i'm gonna move this guy over to the corner <laughs> so we need something more straight on Perspective wise, doesn't have to be like perfectly straight on or anything. Um, I 
I say I kind of just wanted to give him like a muscle man pose. Three D digital graphic is easier than paper, in my opinion. Uh, it depends. Some people think digital is easier because they can, you know, clean up a lot of their mistakes. Um, But you gotta be careful about that. Um, oh, and not just clean up a lot of your mistakes. Now they have stabilizers, so your your lines can look way better than what you actually can draw. Um, and you gotta be careful about that too. Pose off. <laughs> Gonna straighten them out. Hmm. Hey, Terror. Thank you. Hope you're having a good day as well. Not that, but I want him flexing forward, so.
<laughs> Getting there though. Huh? My mom's trying to call me. Hopefully, she'll call my wife. <laughs> Okay. How do we fix this? I can tell it's wrong, but I just can't tell what is really messing me up about it. Maybe it should be this leg should come in to follow the flow of this. Let's try that. one stick out way farther. Well focused with you. <laughs> That's good. I 
feel like he's not wide enough, so I'm either screwing him up on this side. What will you draw throughout the stream? Hey, fuck, heck. Um, I'm trying to draw a, a back view of a character so that I can paint it. Um, this will be a male character. Uh, I'm not as familiar with back poses, so this is a little bit of a challenge. I'm trying to make sure that the pose looks pretty good before I dive into the painting and making more details. So, hopefully that's interesting. If it's not, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no problem. Um. I just saw the new video. Good stuff as always. Thank you, Cad. Uh, that was a tough video to get out. It was <laughs> a lot of work, and I just started learning. Uh, if you noticed during that video, I had little animation-y stuff. I started learning After Effects. Um, and uh, I really wanted to get it in for that video, so it's like challenging as all hell to learn start learning at least after effects and then put it in the video i'm glad you enjoyed it though And notice must be hard with the books and the animations. Yeah, it was it was definitely tough. Uh, but it ultimately it'll make everything a whole lot faster and hopefully cooler videos and everything. <laughs> so uh, I am excited about it. Uh. 
That's why I was having such a hard time. Definitely. Usually when I, or so far when I've been doing these, I'll do like, um, I'll try to get as far as I can with this on my own. And then I'll do a study that's similar-ish. Um, and I think with this one, <laughs> I will definitely have to do some kind of like, Maybe a study or two, because, uh, you know, the back poses I am so much less familiar with, especially with painting. There's going to be a whole lot of crap back in it. Crap happening back here. Um, like when you have an arm coming up like that, the shoulder blade's going to, like, pop out a little bit here. Like, I know it in theory, but, like, what it looks like from an actual painting perspective. And then...
understanding the perspective here. I feel like I am messing that up somehow. Pelvis is always trickier, I feel like it can be in perspective because obviously the rib cage is going this way. It's like a box like that. Bottom, right? So technically it should wrap around the pelvis. Oops, what happened for a watercolor? Should the pelvis tilts downwards so it'll straighten out a little bit like if you're looking at it from the side it should look well that's how it balances out with the spine and everything so technically even if you pop out your chest like that um, it should look like that, which means as long as I don't, as long as I don't smash up, maybe this is my fault. Maybe the rib cage needs to be because it's tilted so much. It's gonna be higher. That would come in more. Give me the space to do what I need to do there. That. I need okay.
these buses back here. Oops, and it's coming out okay. Oy. For the most part. Finished watching the video, your cookie analogy reminded me of something I think is called a hot cold empathy group, which is about how we make decisions more by our current mood than by logic. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> I'll have to look that up. Why you should not buy groceries on an empty stomach. Yeah, that's uh, I usually try to follow that rule actually. <laughs> Made many mistakes um, buying groceries when I'm hungry. I'm glad you liked it though for <laughs> Alright poor I've properly uh been flipping back and forth for this pose. There's a podcast called Stuff to Blow Your Mind that had an episode about it. Damn, okay, you're giving me multiple things to look up. Hang on. <laughs> I gotta, uh... Give me one sec. Hmm. My wife is going to walk the dog. Oh, he's such a good boy. Sometimes I have a hard time going to sleep because I just want to grab him and bring him into the bed. <laughs> Uh, I listen to so many podcasts. If you want any recs, just let me know. I'll start with um, stuff to blow your mind, and then I'll. I'm not like a big podcast listener, but I will. I will check it out. Uh, I do listen to some sometimes. I've actually been trying to find stuff to listen to, like, you know, while you do chores and stuff, like dishes or cleaning the house. So it could be, could be helpful.
Okay. Still pretty strong. I'm just gonna do the face part. Which one? Hey, hey, Terry. How's it going? <sighs> it's cold in here. Jesus. It's a little wide. I'm gonna have to taper that in a little bit, but let me finish the face here. This is a good music to work. I end up listening to a lot of stuff. Helps for chores. My favorite kinds I like science and fun facts. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like, I definitely like science and fun facts as well. of my channel and everything I got really big into like the science of learning and um, I do enjoy researching that Forget what Chad's hair looks like. I'm just going by memory. Can't remember how long it is. so slightly
Pulling all right, about to start drawing too. Oh, that's good, Terry. I like when people draw with me. <laughs> Feel less alone sometimes, so that's nice. played uh when i finished my video i got like an hour to play a little bit more of that octopath traveler that we we're playing on stream that game is fun i was uh surprised at how much i enjoyed it Take our break, uh, Octopath Traveler. Take our break for a sec. We standing break, and I will tell you all about it. <gasps> Got my little stepper machine here. Put these down. Uh, we were talking about RPGs like Final Fantasy. We're just gonna take a 10 minute break guys just so I can stand uh, And then we will get into taking the second hour to start the painting I'll probably bring up some reference of the actual character because I don't remember quite what he looks like uh, it Should be fun uh, So yeah, we were talking about RPGs Terry and uh, Final Fantasy specifically, <laughs> uh, which I do want to play, but I need to finish a few other longer games before I jump back into Final Fantasy VII. But I definitely want to play it because I never played the integrated stuff before uh, Rebirth comes out in February. Uh, so we got some time to get there, but I wanted to play an RPG, so I chose Octopath Traveler. It's like a sprite pixel based adventure, and you have um, I think there's like eight characters and you can start with any one you want it's like a big map that you can see you start with any character they each have their own story <clears throat> and then you if whoever you choose you play through their story uh, we started with the thief in ours and the beginning of his story is like there's some some backstory where he was like he met another kid in prison for for being a thief and then they ended up being thieves together uh and you go and rob this mansion in the in the present time and um it ends up being a trap for for thieves they wanted someone strong enough to go catch another thief that had already stolen from them it was a really good twist honestly <laughs> very anime though uh <clears throat> so you're I started as a thief. You're on the hunt for these dragon stones. They already have one. There's three more. So you're basically trying to track down this thief and the remaining dragon stones. Uh, sounds like Dragon Ball Z or something. <laughs> um, but that's just the thief's story. So there's like eight other characters and they all have their own individual stories. I'm not sure if they cross over quite yet. <clears throat> so from there we went to another village where is this hunter woman and her master left uh, for the good of the kingdom or something uh, to go hunt down this monster that was uh, causing havoc or something uh, and he's been gone for over a year and hasn't returned uh, you end up fighting something in the woods and when you come back uh, this is the part that the stream didn't see but when you come back uh the wolf who's like the her master's uh, pet who he uses in battle because you have your own like beast you have like a leopard or something he is a wolf and so the wolf her master's wolf comes back and you basically assume that something bad has happened to him and you're on the trail to go get him so now i have the thief and the uh the Amazonist, Amazonian woman. She's like a beast hunter. 
something. They're very cool characters. And then I just ended up in a third story, which was some sort of priest. Uh, priesthood. She's basically on like a pilgrimage to light the flame. That one was a little bit more confusing and boring, um, but still good. The gameplay is really, really fun though. I like the boss fights especially. Sounds like manga, nice. Yeah, it does. It. A lot of their stories are very anime. Like I can picture them in my head and feel like I'm either reading a manga or watching an anime. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Gonna die on my frickin' stepping machine. <clears throat> I'm really happy with this pose. Came out quite good. I feel like, um... Just the last couple times we've been drawing, I feel like it's been ever so slightly like there's a dial of how hard it is to come up with poses in my own head uh, and like see something here and get it down on the paper it used to be like set to to 10 like it was so freaking hard I, first of all i couldn't come up with ideas and then even when i could they'd come out really different <laughs> i tried to draw them and that's a constant struggle with artists uh, to not be able to do what you see in your head but this this is a little different where it's just like the idea I didn't need it to be perfect and even the idea didn't come out right like I, I didn't have the skill to do it in the right perspective or I turned it too far or something but in this case the past couple times it's like the dial's been turned to eight or seven and I feel like I'm actually coming up with ideas and I'm getting them down it's a very weird feeling because it doesn't feel any easier but it's happening easier <laughs> so I'm, I'm like a little perplexed but it is cool um, to know that this process is starting to work because uh, I'm just going on the assumption based on how other people I know have learned and it's it's very obvious like how they've learned that this is a process that works but until you experience it yourself obviously you don't know for sure right um, and it's not really well documented by artists who teach that this is a way that you need to learn <laughs> yeah not using references so this is all just from imagination and it's really just not like I said not well documented a lot of artists who teach don't talk about how to get good at drawing from imagination, you have to draw from imagination. Um, and I just felt like I was kind of beating my head uh, against it, and nothing was changing. And I can feel it changing now. Or, or like I said, it doesn't feel like anything's changed, but I can see, I physically feel the difference because it's just easier to get that idea out, and it's actually happening. So, it's kind of crazy. It is a little weird. Psycho. But, you know, if it keeps happening, like, I, I just have to start learning more anatomy and more poses so that I actually get the... Uh, technical part of this correct and designed well so design anatomy um design of like just the lines and stuff but also like pose design making sure it's an interesting pose um you know dealing with making sure there's a good silhouette there and things like that uh it's there's a lot of like intricate little bits that work into that so Anatomy for sure is one that I want to keep improving on, but there are other parts to it, like the actual composition and design that I should focus on as well. But we'll get to all of it.
I'm tired. I feel like I'm recovering from making the video. <laughs> it's okay though. I will. Let's see how it's doing here. Okay, doing good. <clears throat> I'm gonna sit back down. Ooh. Let me gather some Chad-like reference from the Bleach Archive. All right, Chad, 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 where are you? Ooh. This is a good reference, I think. Oop. Oops. We get a skin color, we got kind of the shape of his hair. I forgot his hair is not quite like um <clears throat> when I drew it I was assuming like dreads and stuff, but it's more like a curly situation. Like a spiky curly situation. Um So we will take care of that and then um We'll just drop also a painting reference, which I pretty much do every time the same one. It's just like a, a mental note, like this is the direction I want to go in, so please do this <laughs> to my brain. That's essentially... Uh... Okay, there are a few Steven Zapata, Ahmed Eldori. Yeah, you spelled. Uh, actually, I don't know if his last name's spelled like that. Yeah, no, you got it right. <laughs> uh, Mark Burnett, Fang Zhu, and many others teach to draw from the imagination. Uh, sorry, maybe that was a little confusing. There are obviously people that teach to draw from imagination. The one, a lot of stuff that out that is out there is not very good. I would definitely agree with, uh, actually, I don't know Stevens, do I know who Stevens of that is? I think I've seen his YouTube channel, but I don't remember. I haven't watched enough of Ahmed to know, and I don't know Steven as well. Hey, Quacken! Uh, I would say the one person I know that teaches it the right way is, uh, or was, uh, Kim Jong-gi. So if they're taking notes from him, um, and that's a good thing. But I will check out the rest. I know Mark Burnett. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he's talked about it. Bang Zhu uh, uses a lot of... Uh, not that this is a bad thing, but he uses a lot of 3D resources to the point where I don't feel like there's not a lot of imagination stuff happening there. It's a, it's a lot of relying on reference. Mm. 
by I again by the comment I simply meant that um it's not that there aren't people that don't try to teach it it's that uh the simple comment of saying like to get good at drawing from imagination you have to you have to practice drawing from imagination like nobody almost nobody says that uh, Kim Jong Gi did do that though but uh I don't know uh, many others who have done that they'll usually tell you like build your visual library draw from reference <clears throat> and that's how you'll be able to to draw from imagination you have to just you know build that visual knowledge but if that were true we'd have we'd all have a visual library from just drawing random stuff but that's not how learning works it's not how our brain remembers things and that's the that's the frustrating part if i'm wrong though terry uh let me know because i'd like to actually watch an artist talk about that He's got industrial design background from Star Wars and the likes from way back in the day. Uh, is that Feng Zhu you're talking about, Quacken? I remember there was a lot of controversy with Feng Zhu, like when his school opened up. Some stuff about him being like kind of a, a creeper? Um, so... I feel like he sort of fell off the map, but people still go to his school. So. Yeah, nobody remembers that. <laughs> Maybe this was back in the day of like conceptart.org or something. Um, people were saying, uh, you know, there was some questionable stuff happening with um, like he was hiring only very pretty assistants or female assistants and stuff like this and he was there was some like first-hand accounts um that that people referenced from people who had gone to school um i don't remember them now i just remember it was weird and i was like i'm not gonna learn from him anymore <laughs> Yeah, it was a big thing back in the day. Someone even s sent me a video <laughs> about it. It was like something he made that seemed really weird. Uh, again, like I said, it, it probably has been long enough where it's just thrown under the, the rug. Um, And like nobody talks about it anymore. I, I don't even know if I'd be able to find. No, 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 no. Noah Bradley's a totally separate situation. <laughs> that that was messed up. Yeah, Bradley, everybody knows about still. Noah Bradley's a friggin' weirdo. I was messed up when that came out and then he just tried to like glaze over it and he's still like posting or he started posting and stuff uh, again and people are still on his his channels it's weird I, I feel like even if you <laughs> if you get to like a certain level of popularity like no matter what, you're always going to have followers, even if you do something horrible. Um, so, it again, it's just weird. <laughs> I know there's another artist in the game industry that was exposed like three or four years ago for pretty much ruining our careers for a lot of women. Yeah. Uh, 
There definitely is, and I'm sure there's more that are still in the industry. It is a prevailing problem. We're lucky that some women are, you know, brave enough to actually come forward. <clears throat> but it, it can be, like, career-ending for them to come forward, so I understand why some, you know, people don't. And it shouldn't be, but it is, and it's stupid. We gotta, we gotta stand by our, our women and make sure they're treated well. I don't, I don't understand some of these studio situations sometimes, where it's just like these people are just outright treated horribly, and the other teams can see it. Like the complicity is unbelievable. I, I wouldn't be able to do that. If I had worked at a place like that and saw something happening like that. So yeah, sorry about the Feng Zhu stuff, I really genuinely don't remember what the story was. I know it had something to do with women and being a little bit of a creeper. I don't think he actually <clears throat> did anything, you know, I, there was no like controversy around the fact that he was uh, preying on anybody, I just, I... I think it was just like <clears throat> scummy kind of behavior. But again, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, you would have to like go into the depths of Google search or comfort.org or wherever the hell that first started. Because I do not remember. On a small delay, and that's acting up. Oh, it's okay. Yes, Feng Zhu is the FCD school. <clears throat> that's where the rumors started, from what I understood. I want to say it was something... Say, I don't want to speak out of turn, so I don't remember. I, I, I just remember some vague stuff. And it, he could have, like, totally cleaned up his his act, too, so maybe that was, maybe that's the case. Because there's a, I remember seeing, um, there's this girl that's been posting videos about going to Feng Tzu's school and, like, showing her work every semester. Um... I just saw a video pop up on my feed the other day, so obviously it's not terrible for women to go there, so um, maybe he, like, isn't being as weird anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's in, um... FCD, I think, is in Singapore. He does run a school. It's his school. <coughs> Where is FCD? It is in... Yes, it's in Singapore. So, you know. Still, they focus a lot on uh, like environment art and concept art for like I would say props and stuff less on characters 
They still do characters, I think, but it's definitely focused on <coughs> environment and props and things like that. But yeah, I might have seen Sam Gill showing the schoolwork. Yeah, I think it was a relatively new video, unless it's old and I'm making a mistake. She studied on distance, like due to COVID. Oh, so she's not actually going to the school? I didn't get a chance to watch the video. <clears throat> I just don't like... I also, like, I looked at some of his tutorials back in the day, I remember, because I, you know... I wanted to get good at that, but I, I don't think I really like the way he teaches. He definitely has some good knowledge, like he's an industry veteran for a reason. Must have been hell of expensive, uh, probably, I imagine. It probably is. Pretty good. All right, guys, we've got our sketch done. Uh, just need to duplicate this. Oops. Hey. Okay. What the hell? I just want to copy and paste, please. All right, there we go. I like to retain um, a copy of the line art just in case something goes horribly wrong. Um, I don't have to redo a ton of work. <laughs> right, right, okay. Um, we're gonna have to separate him out though. Or actually, let's just close this one and bring that one open. There we go. <clears throat> oh, the one thing that I did do is I should make him a bit bigger. It is painting time. We got a oh fudge sickles. Uh, except for his hands, I didn't draw his hands. Even though. I'm not going to know how to do this. <laughs> Let's see. Thumb, is that set? I'll just do like a quick guess. But yeah, it is painting time. There is no way in hell I'm going to get this right. I will probably have to look up reference for this. When it comes time. That's what it would look like. Uh, 
Okay. We'll just do that. Time to fill this sucker in. So, if you haven't painted characters before, typically most people start <clears throat> just because it's easier uh, to manage. But you make a nice clean mask to work from. So you can make nice big brush strokes and it won't leave the area that you drew. You can always adjust the mask. Terry, accept any tips and critiques? Uh, no, not typically. Um, no offense to anybody, it just, I think it sets a, a dangerous precedent for people to just like chime in with their thoughts and ideas and not, you know, if I, if I specifically ask for it, then yeah, anybody could go right ahead, but. This is a learning process for me. Um, if I get stuck on something, I've there have been a has been once or twice where I've asked like usually four is there with a handy expertise. Um, not that I think that you guys won't have anything good for me or anything. It's just. It's part of the learning process. I have to I have to see my mistakes or I have to make my mistakes and see them and then try to correct them myself. And then when I'm done, like that's when I would want a teacher or something to come in and be like, "Here's where you screwed up or here's where you could have improved." And that's when I would appreciate that. And I I I would ask for that kind of feedback. But in the process of it, like if I royally screw up the, the arm or something, um, you guys don't necessarily need to jump in and, <laughs> and help me. It's like, think of it like a, like a child who needs to learn that failure is okay. And you got to let them experience these things. Um, I may change my stance on it in the future, I'm not sure. Again, I think it just sets a dangerous precedent in the stream just because you'll get a whole bunch of people in the future if you let that happen, like trying to critique you and give their own thoughts and like, especially in the middle of like a sketch, like I may be trying to do something totally different or my goal is totally different from, from what people are expecting and they're trying to give their thoughts on what they think should be happening just not that wouldn't be fun backseat arting bad no unsolicited feedback they were brutal <laughs> <laughs> back in and uh four have been here for a while um so they know but it's okay terry um everybody is pretty awesome here and again there may be times where I ask for it so it's okay if that does happen you're more than welcome to say something but yeah typically most artists do not enjoy they might have a way worse reaction than me, <laughs> but they don't enjoy uh, backseat arting, as Quacken called it. Like, let them do their thing, even though they, it may be wrong or broken, they've got to learn. It would be different if somebody was like, if... If I had a mentor and they were in the stream, you know, I'd be like, sure, tell me 
every time I screw up. But, you know, none of you guys are my teacher. And that's not to be rude or anything, it's just... That's just the facts. And even, even then, even if you had a mentor, they would know not to step in. Um, you know, they would be respectful until there was an appropriate time to step in. Uh, hi Roman, how's it going? You can get super distracting to be honest, they are people online think it's in their right to critique someone else's work unprompted, but they're wrong. <laughs> Let them cook, yes exactly. God, I figure I could give tips to speed things up for you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I, I know some people do have it in their, you know, they're they're trying to be nice and it's not it has nothing it's not coming from like a uh you know a place of superiority or or viciousness or anything like they're not trying to be mean and i i have no doubt of your intentions terry you seem like you seem very nice um it's just again it's about that learning process and making sure that everybody else in the stream <laughs> respects that process too. Um. And that's really all that that is. It might be kind of fun, even as like a learning process, to be like, to like ask people what they think, if any, well obviously there's going to be because I'm still learning, but if there are any things that you would fix, like I could, I could actually, ask, not that I'm asking that now, <laughs> but like it might be an interesting experiment, like a learning and teaching for other people too, like what would you fix with this drawing, what do you see that's wrong? Because you're going to see things that I'm not going to see, right? You're kind of blind to your own artwork a little bit. Um, but it might be an interesting learning experience to see what uh, what people would, would choose. I could potentially do that in the future. It might be interesting. <sighs> I think the only place is really okay if it's a public forum or Discord chat specifically meant for feedback. Then as long as you have something good to critique, it's okay in my eyes. Yeah, a public forum where somebody posts um, that they want a critique, that's that's a different story, right? Because they actually want people to comment on their work. Okay, bucket. Oh, why is that happening? Oh, I'm done. Need a clean layer. There we go. Oh, we missed... Uh little hair here. No! I'm on the bucket still. Uh -oh. Okay. Let me 
see a problem with the perspective and this foot down here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I asked him not just blurt out that the chef cooks me. I'll thank you, Terry. <laughs> For more peers in odd space, I don't think I have authority over anyone unless it's given to me specifically. Instead, I would love a roast and stream. Doesn't sound healthy at all. I would totally be down. <laughs> Not healthy at all, but I would definitely do it. You guys are funny. Um, a roasting stream. Uh, I would do that if I was more like confident i don't know how well a roasting stream would work like for somebody who's still learning it feels like it would just be demoralizing um i think if i if i made like a really good piece and i was happy with it i'd be like okay roast this like i really want to know what i did wrong like when you're peeking in um what color is this just like a dark brown okay if if I was peeking in uh <coughs> That's the airbrush. Wrong. Come on. Let me say this one more time. If I was peeking in my like the you know the roller coaster of art where you start you can't really um record what you're seeing in your brain but then you know you start getting better and you come up that roller coaster and what you see in your head is kind of what you got out and you peak and then you come back down the roller coaster right and because you're learning and now you see more uh and then you know slowly you start to get better at recording what you see again so if i was peaking and i was actually pretty good um i might actually do a, a roast of some kind that might be fun um, cause I, I, it would be interesting to see what other people see with your work. Um, Uh, hi, Saria. Have you seen Try Hard short animation film? It's the best short film ever. Would love to see you react to it. By the way, I'm new here. Uh, that's, I'm happy to see that you're new here. I have not seen Try Hard short animation film. Um, Try Hard short animation film. How long is it? Maybe we can watch it at the very end. Is this a goblin? Oh, I love... I love the Goblin shorts. They're so good. Wow, it's, it's almost nine minutes. Uh, can we watch stuff on stream like this? Like, will I get, will my video get flagged? Does anybody know? Also, yeah, welcome, sorry. Glad you're here. For some reason, art YouTubers get a lot of views from roast videos. I just really love pain. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I've, I've seen, uh, 
what is it that guy Sam does arts or something he has like a video where he like people actually wanted to get roasted by him although I would say his roasts are just nice you know or funny they're not like serious I think people want unserious roasts if someone were to be like roast by work and a bunch of people submitted like their drawings and people I was actually like serious and be like this is terrible fix this I don't know if that would go over as well as just being like a funny person <laughs> Maybe we can watch that animation short together uh, before I finish the stream, but somebody needs to tell me if my <laughs> stream is going to get flagged by doing React content, because I genuinely don't know. Uh, Alright, we gotta put some... Uh... Did we put... Green, we put green underwear. Let's do orange then for Chad. Put him in some briefs. Um, That. Lighter. There we go. <laughs> His briefs may be too long. Hang on. Sam does arts, does gentle roasts, and he also suggests what to improve on. Okay, thank you, Jamal. <laughs> also welcome. Uh, but yeah, I think I saw one of them. He was just kind of nice and, and funny about it. Like, he wasn't trying to be... Not that he should be trying to be mean and roast or anything. Um, but yeah, he was definitely very gentle. <laughs> um... I know the anatomy of the butt here is a little off, but it's all right. Now the question is, I feel like his skin's gonna be more. Golden orange. Get that wrong. Look at the mouth. Um, I kind of like the dark skin. Roman, what do you think about AI and CG industry? Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple at the moment. The AI as it currently stands is is theft, you know? It's built off of the backs of every artist that did not... Um, that did not ask to be a part of it, you know? And just being used as for profit by rich tech douches, um, you know? 
if it was actually created by an artist <laughs> and uh I, I bet you so many like if we actually did it in a nice way and people weren't gonna lose their jobs um I bet you artists would have actually volunteered their work to be a part of the AI, um, you know, learning model. Because it would have been cool to see that stuff. Like, there's parts about AI that are cool, but again, it's the way that our society runs, like, it's just going to be used to exploit people. So, and, and it already is based on how it was built. It's just built by exploiting people they've like fully admitted that they like just don't they didn't want to have to pay for for licensing because they wouldn't have made any money and it's literally just about money to them so um there are cool parts about it i wish you know it were different but it's not so as it stands it's just it's completely disrespectful to the actual community. Yeah, exactly. They see it as not having to pay people. That's literally the only reason uh, why it even catches any traction. Stolen labor, labor built on data they definitely did not get permission to use. Yeah, I mean, the same tired <laughs> story, right? Um, and you know, hopefully, hopefully, that stuff goes in the right direction. You know, there's the lawsuit that they have right now um, with some of the like artists that have been all very negatively impacted I know even as a graphic designer like good luck trying to get a independent business started because that's becoming more difficult it, it just takes away labor from people and it also I've, you know, I've read stories about how this is this happened to the switch to digital too, but the expectation is that you can do more with AI faster. So, uh, and really all it does is people have to redo the AI work because it's all broken um, in some shape or form. So <laughs> it ends up making the workflow slower or the same speed, but they expect more from you and faster and they expect to pay less because of that. So. It just devalues everything. All right, I need to think of a lighting scenario here. Let me go with it. Um... Uh, this I really do wish it was different though like there's there's a lot of cool things about AI or the possibility of it you know I think people assume that artists are like against AI and like technology and stuff. It's just like, no, we enjoy it. It's just the fact that it was built off of ripped off labor and they're trying to make it so that they don't have to pay anyone. Um, it's like the way we use it that we don't like. And it's unfortunate that it, had to be this way because it could have been so good
Uh, yeah, I don't know YouTube will give me a flag if you show the video, but I've seen a lot of streamers watch random YouTube videos on stream. Either way, the event animation is about pursuing art and the passion to learn it. From watching your vids, you would totally love it. Well, I'm down to try it out. Um, it might be a good little experiment to see what happens. So... We will try it and see what happens. Uh, which we are almost coming up to that time. Does everybody want to watch this video? I think it would be fun if it's that inspiring. Transformer. Let's go. Okay, cool. I'm down. <laughs> so inspired. I just got an animation job. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. Very happy for you. Uh, I'm working on my own short film. It's in French, but there's subtitles. Dude, I... Goblins is one of the coolest things ever. Like, the students that make work there are amazing. I love French short animations. Like, they're always so good. Uh, I don't know what they're doing over there, but it's, it's amazing. Um, all right. This feels pretty decent. It's a good start, anyway. Like I said, I need a lot of help with the anatomy there. Uh, but we will figure it out. All right, let me bring this up. And we will switch screens here for a sec. Hopefully YouTube is not mean. <laughs> Uh, hang on, let me read. So this is the similar this actually happened during the time when music record players became a thing. Before that, most musicians were hard to play live in public places and bars. Oh yeah, for sure. Every time technology changes, they expect you to do things faster and better. Um, I heard that this was a similar situation with um, people who did, um, what is it? Uh, they typed out stuff that was being said. I forget the name of that actual job. Um, 
but once AI technology, the version of AI technology that came out for that the first time, um, transcription, I think it's called, uh, it wasn't very good. So they would still have to go through the whole video, but they were expected to get it done faster and better. Um, and like same type of problems. Yeah, the thing in courtrooms, yeah. <laughs> uh okay guys we're gonna switch screen here i think i can just switch it to there we go um okay and i think the audio you guys should hear it just fine i'll turn my own audio up it is eight minutes long so it's try hard this is a short animation film by goblins i think as long as i talk over it a little bit you know I'll, i won't ruin it uh although i'm pretty sure it's probably in french alex and art soon dreams of joining eve the elite's vision school together with her best friend kimmy they train hard to pass the notoriously impossible entrance exam so as long as i make commentary i think it should be good so here we go Oh man, look at those sketches already. They look good. I told you, these guys are so good. Yeah, so it's, it's in French, Saria, I'm assuming. She looks like somebody from Team Rocket. <laughs> it's like old school Pokemon look. What does that say? Is that like art school? Oh, put on subtitles. Sorry. So we can understand. Sorry, I don't think I've ever put on subtitles for any of the Goblin shorts. I just assumed that I wouldn't be able to... Oh, there it is. Okay. It's like an anime! <laughs> oh, that's so cool! Holy hell. Whoever did this is so good. It's Attack on Titan. <laughs> so yeah, it's a prestigious art school. Man. That's nuts. <laughs> Alex, c'est pas fini. On va bosser deux fois plus et on l'aura l'année prochaine. Is there an actual school like this, or is I'm assuming this is a fake school? I don't, I don't, never heard of it before, so it's just for the show. Training montage. Oh my god. The drawings in this are so good. Yu-Gi-Oh on the wall. Saw it. <laughs> the old lady with the umbrella. <laughs> it's crazy because their drawings are already so, so good. Like, look at those. <laughs> they didn't get in again? Oh, 
Oh my god. At this point, I'd be like, we're in school, I'll go do it myself. Yeah, this would be demoralizing. That would be tough. For sure. There are a lot of people who want to draw. And some people aren't good, like, test takers, you know? And that can be a major factor. Like, oh, she got accepted. Look at all those refusals. Oh, my gosh. France has so many good animated movies. Yeah, they really do. Oh, damn. So mean. I mean, she's mad. She's frustrated. So that's understandable. But, you know, you don't have to go to a prestigious art school to be a great artist. I get the desire, but that, you know, it's not so much a big thing anymore, I feel like. More and more artists know that they can do it without any kind of prestigious art school. It's just actually doing the work. So gone on the wall. <laughs> I didn't see that. I'll look if we get into our room again. Glad my comics teacher told us about this scenario, like getting published or accepted into a school isn't easy, but doesn't mean you're bad at your craft. Yeah, exactly. There's so many reasons why someone would get selected over you. Some of it doesn't even have to do with your art. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she just went full Naruto run. Although this is more like the Flash. Great, that was just to poke a hole. <laughs> Aww, that's cute. Remember, this takes place in Europe, not America. US art schools are just a scam in Europe and won't cost you three legs to attend the school. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a lot of people apply. That is true. They teach a lot more people in European and uh, Asian schools, I think, too. Which I don't know if I necessarily agree with, but I mean, a lot of people end up getting good, so I can't argue with the results, I guess, in some cases. That was really cool. Um, thank you, Saria, for, for showing us that. I'll drop it back into... Oh, I don't even have access. What the hell? 
I don't even have my my artwork. It's not here. Where'd you go? Try this again. Boop. There we go. Just wanted to go back here for a sec. Uh, bubble tea is God. Bubble tea for the win. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Reminds me of Satoshi Kon style of work. Uh, Day glow. I'm not sure who Satoshi Kon is, but I would definitely look it up because. That was cool as hell. I want to see more. Oh, pa pa Paprika. I haven't actually seen the movie, but I've seen clips of it. Um, yes. I would agree. There's definitely some similarities. There's definitely Japanese influences in that. For sure. That was so cool. Oh, he's not alive anymore? Oh my gosh, that's, that's sad. A lot of the good ones are not with us anymore. 2010, okay. Oh no. No, yeah, 2010. Wait, his wife died in the same... Oh, cancer. Jesus. That's terrible. All right, well, we did a decent job on art today. Thank you for letting us end. Sorry, it was such a cool video. Um, I I really love that. I gotta go back through. I haven't been in Goblins in a while, so I'm sure there's a ton of new stuff I haven't seen. If you guys haven't seen the work from the school, they're pretty much almost all always good. The ones that they... The ones that they upload, at least. I don't know if that's every student, but... Most people tend to praise Ghibli movies, but I personally prefer Satoshi's movies more. Uh, yeah, I... This is one thing that probably will be very controversial, but I'm not really... I'm not really a fan of Miyazaki movies, like Ghibli movies. Um, like, they're interesting... Uh, but there's stuff I like a lot more, I guess. Um, I don't know why. I've never, I've never really been interested in, like, some of the movies that I've watched that people love, like, uh, uh, Howl's Moving Castle, like, didn't really make that much sense to me, sense to me, the characters didn't connect, um, but people love it, and they talk about it with this, like, rich, like it has this rich story and I, I feel like I'm very thoughtful about storytelling. So it was just like, I didn't see those things happening that you did. It was very confusing. Uh, I also am not as big of a fan of his art style too. I did like Princess Mononoke. That was a good one. I was a kid when I watched that. So I'd have to watch it again to see if I actually still enjoy it. Um, none of them spoke to me. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. That I felt that same way. But it doesn't change the fact that they've done remarkable work. Just wasn't for me. Um, Alright guys, we're going to end here. Uh, thank you again, sorry for the video. And uh, it was great catching a bunch of new people. Saria, Cab, Dayglow. Here, it's nice to see you back here. Um, or Quacken. It's great to see you both as always. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for showing up. Uh, if you haven't watched my video, it came out today. Um, thank you, Cad. Uh, so, yeah, jump over to my channel after I close this down and check out my newest video. I'd really appreciate it. Um, uh, it's about impulse control and never being able to finish uh your artwork and how to overcome that <laughs> have a good day everybody i'll catch you all later thank you quacking bye guys